Hey everybody, this is Guy's Comic Life, and it is New Comic Book Day. It is the first week of September. It is September 5th, I believe. 4th of the 5th, I don't know. Somewhere somewhere in there. I've got a lot of books to show you guys. Um, I, haven't done, I didn't do a haul last week because it was such an abysmal week. <laughs> There's only like two comics I got. Um, and since I only got two comics last week, and I've been saving my money, I kind of went overboard this week, but you know, I'm okay. I'm content with it. Trust me. You want to stick around. I got some good stuff. I got some Donny Cates Thanos goodness. I got, I got a CG8, CG, <laughs> CGC 9.8 on a book that I was hoping to get it on, and I'm gonna be showing that off. So stick around, and I'm actually gonna flip the camera around and show you the books because you don't want to see me. You want to see the books. All right. Enjoy. Okay, guys. So here to start us off, we are starting hot. We are starting strong. We have Thanos, number 15, CG Seed at a 9.8. This was unbelievable. I got this. I guess Doc Ock's not sticking around. I got this at a hell of a deal. And I have all the Thanos books, but this is one that I did not have. And it's one of the more significant books because in this issue, we learned that the Cosmic Ghost Rider is, spoiler, Frank Castle, and that just blew my mind. I thought it was like Deadpool at first because he was very slapsticky and very comical. Really good take on the character. See here, King Thanos, and he's got Hulk as a pet, and there's Cosmic Ghost Rider up there. Beautiful Jeff Shaw cover, one of my favorites of the year. So, you can see the Hulk right there. And if I pan up, there's King Thanos. Cosmic Ghost Rider, and then up there, there's your label. Cosmic Ghost Rider revealed to be Frank Castle. Came out March of this year. Wow, my, like right when I turned 25. So yeah, this was like absolutely my favorite comic book run of the year. Right behind Venom. What do you, what do you, what do you thought? Yeah, Donny Cates just became my favorite writer overnight when he did Thanos and Venom. So to continue. I have Thanos issue 14. I picked up a second copy. I found this at a half price books for $4. I lost my shit, part of my language, because this book's gone for like 30, 40 bucks. It's the first cover appearance of the Cosmic Ghost Rider and is the second part in this story. Sorry, I stepped away to get my drink. I need to stay hydrated. <laughs> And also at this half price books, I got all these at half price books, by the way. I found a freaking second print. What kind of half price books gets a second print? And so this is the second printing in number 14. You got like Thanos' memories, you got him going against, uh, I think that's Adam Warlock. And uh, it's funny in the book, Thanos says these are his greatest memories these are his happiest memories but this is like when he's like killing everybody and i just oh i think i thought that was hilarious i thought that was a great parallel all right also at half price books i got uh kind of a beat not really beat up but it's probably like a 7.0 uh amazing spider-man 658 i got this because this is the first appearance of his future foundation fantastic four suit i love that costume that is a great looking costume i uh, got this at my comic shop for three bucks this is the first man that's like a vf near mint that's real good shape because for three bucks the first full appearance of black heart uh, Daredevil 270, um, guest starring Spider-Man, drawn by uh, John Romita Jr. Uh, before his artwork started to look whack. So this is actually when he looked, you know, pr he was a pretty decent artist. His dad's my favorite comic book artist. Uh, keep an eye out for this book. You can get it for really cheap. Uh, the Daredevil Netflix series is uh, due in season three. I know Typhoid Mary is going to be a villain. Um, so I know her books just shot up recently. But if, if they do anything with Blackheart, that's going to pick up. And I was watching uh, Comic Tom's video. He's a 
really great YouTuber, really great to the IG comic book community. And he was talking about uh, Jessica Cruz, uh, one of the new Green Lantern core members. And uh, I remember I was buying Justice League in the New 52, but I stopped when Jim Lee stopped drawing because I really only bought that because I like Jim Lee's artwork. And I'm kind of depressed that I stopped picking it up because uh, the Justice League War happened in in this series. Uh, Grail, Darkseid's daughter, appeared in this series. And in this issue, issue number 30, is the first appearance of uh, Jessica Cruz in Cameo. It's on the last page. But uh, CBSI uh, had this like on their top 10 two weeks ago. And it's going for like 20 to 30 bucks on the online right now. And she, you can probably sell this set for 50. This is her first full appearance. So this is like her in like the full. This is Justice League 31. I grabbed both of those for cover price. That was really, really a good deal. Um, okay, back to things. Continuing with DC too. Uh, also got this at half price books. This was two bucks. I needed this to finish my Dark Knight's Metal. I have all one through six now in first print, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm slowly picking up Doomsday Clock. I'm not really reading it continuously because the schedule's all off and my comic shop has like dozens of these copies. But I'm on issue three right now. I thought it was really cool. Uh, Batman basically just thinks Rorschach is insane well the new Rorschach so we locked him up in Arkham that was cool all right this is a mad score right here I found this for a freaking dollar half price books this is Suicide Squad number one uh first issue white pages probably an probably an 8.0 and that's hard to do on these black covers um if you can get this graded in the nines you're looking at like 100 200 bucks so if you can find this book for cheap and get it graded I highly recommend it Another book I found for a dollar that I just picked up. It's an early uh, uh, Liefeld Cable New Mutants number 96. I thought that was pretty cool. And also for a dollar, this, this one's in rough shape, but it is all new Wolverine number one. And it's the first time Laura Kinney X23 dons the Wolverine costume. Great. Wish it was in better condition. And I found a copy of 52 Week 1. Uh, in this series, uh, Kate Kane becomes Batwoman, so uh, look out for that series. Um, let's see right here. Oh, yeah. I already showed this while, but, but I got West Coast Avengers a couple weeks ago. I thought the story was kind of shit, but <clears throat> that's besides the point. Okay got a preacher reprint at half price books for like 50 cents i thought that was funny i just never read the story i thought i'd check it out got some batman adventures goodies no there's not a batman adventures 12 i'm sorry to disappoint you uh these um i actually got from my dad because he was moving to florida and these were mine when i was a kid and i just never took them and now i took them so that's issue five of Batman Beyond. Oh wait, that's out of order. <clears throat> it's issue seven of Batman Beyond with like, uh, that's when um, the Splicer story happens. I don't know if you remember that, but like all the kids in Gotham were like becoming addicted to this drug that like turned, it was basically like tattoos. They got addicted to this thing where they turned into animals and Terry turned into like a man bat. And in rough shape, we have issue 24. We got Terry McGinnis trying to save his mom. Man, I just love that Batman Beyond suit. That is, that is gold. Bruce Tim, you are you are a genius. And then also in rough shape, I have Batman Adventures 15. Why not? I mean, they're just they're just great to look at. You know, even though they're not in great shape. I mean, who doesn't want to look at that? That is cool. that is a gorgeous book right there. Okay. Also books that I picked up from the house that I didn't know I had. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number seven. This is a Deadpool variant. It's a homage to Amazing 33, one of the best Spider-Man covers of all time by Steve Ditko. And he's trying to get out of the rubble. And that was a 75 Years of Marvel cover two. And then just randomly I found Doctor Strange 11. 
My dad had a Ghost Rider book that he didn't care for, so that's Ghost Rider 41. And I've been obsessed with Ghost Rider, so I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, ooh, another one. Batman and Robin Adventures number two. That's actually in really good shape, actually. That's, that's in mint condition. It's pretty cool. And Paul Dini actually wrote that one. That's awesome. And now we got... Uh, I don't know if you saw today, but Entertainment Weekly released the first images of the Captain and Marvel movie, and it looks amazing. You saw the Kree and the Skrulls and, uh, and Ronan when he was young and Nick Fury when he was young, and it just looks mad cool, mad cool. Um, I hope they just don't go full feminist on us, because damn, that, all those images look great. But yeah, pick up Captain Marvel. Uh, those books are pretty hot. So that's number 20. I don't know if I said that or not. And I've had this book, I just uh, haven't bagged it and shut it off. Action Comics, 311. Cool story, Superman, King of Earth. It's like, man. You know like that episode of Futurama when uh, they go to that home world of all the like water people, the aqua people in season one, and there's that king that fried drinks that was in the bottle and he wore that like crazy crown? <laughs> that's, that's what that looks like right here. I'm sorry, but that's what that reminds me of. Get this preacher out of here. You'd rather look at that beautiful Thanos number 15. I gotta send in my 13 to get CGC. And then also Donny Cates. These were my two pickups from last week. This is a uh, web of Vietnam. Vietnam. It, this was a great story, man. This was uh, basically uh, Rex Strickland. The uh, character in Donny Cates' current run, this was his squad in Vietnam. And um, basically the symbiote dragon, the Grendel, Nick Fury had it on ice. And you see one by one Rex's squad getting killed by uh, Null symbiotes. And then you see at the end of the book, Rex ba basically makes a deal with uh, Nick Fury. So... Pretty shady stuff. Not really what I was expecting, but pretty good nonetheless. Downy Kids is a good writer. And then we have Venom First Host number one. That's a really gorgeous cover. Uh, Mark Bagley is one of my favorite Spider-Man artists. I cannot stress this enough. The guy, the guy is brilliant. Um, I love his work on Spider-Man Venom. That was actually, I mean, the first time I was introduced to Venom, I was a kid and. Uh, kid in the 90s and the first spider-man book i picked up was like asm 375 that gold foil cover where and that that's crazy that was like the end of spider-man and venom's times as being arch enemies and then after that they were like not really partners like they still hated each other like they, they would fight in maximum carnage and in lethal protector but they had an understanding they're like you stay out of our way we'll stay out of yours oh yeah that drink's good and uh, I picked up number two today. That was good. So basically in that story, um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I don't know how I feel about Venom having a first host. I mean, it's no secret that he did have a first host because in Venom Space Night 12, which I'm going to show you in like five seconds, uh, the first host uh, did exist. They're just expanding upon it. So this book actually goes for a bunch of money, like 20, 30 bucks on eBay. And I don't know why, because no one ever bought Venom Space Knight. Like, this was a terrible comic book. But this is technically the first appearance of the first host. And it's not even, like, that big of a deal. Like, if I can, like, find it and show you, it's just one little panel at the top. At the top. Alright, I found it. Okay. My first host was not worthy. He created a thirst in me. I was addicted. No, I am addicted to rage. So that's him. There it is. So yeah, technically the first cameo. Well, no, not technically. It is the first cameo appearance of the first host. Pretty wild. It's so funny. Everyone's on this huge Venom kick right now. <laughs> and you know what? I couldn't be more happier. I love it. So all these comic books I'm about to show you are new today. This is from New Comic Book Day today. Uh, there's Venom First Host number two. So the first host's name is Telcar. 
and he's uh, very old, and I think he's Cree, and a scroll attacks him, and Telkar basically says, I, you know, I was bonded to your symbiote first, and he wants it back, but he respects the decision that it's bonded with Eddie and doesn't want him anymore, but Telkar learns that Eddie's symbiote had an offspring, well, another offspring, because, you know, he had Carnage as his son and Toxins as his grandson, so... Uh, Telkar takes the Venom offspring and steals it. So I like where this is going. I didn't know how I'd feel about it, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, and to finish off with uh, Venom, now, I can't guarantee this, but this is just my opinion. I got that for $3, by the way. That That is not a $3 book. That is worth way more than that. Uh, so that's Web of Spider-Man 119. This is Scarlet Spider versus Venom. And this is the first appearance of Kane. He's a clone of Peter Parker. And this is the second appearance of the Scarlet Spider. And uh, the first time Spider-Man and Venom, or Scarlet Spider and Venom meet in comics. So a couple weeks ago, Donny Cates was doing a podcast. And the person doing the interview said, Do you have any plans for the Scarlet Spider and Venom? He did not answer that question. He... He's, he basically said, I can't say a damn thing. Which basically means that I think shit's about to go down between these two again. And if it does, this book's going to spike and it's going to be very hard to find. So if you can pick that up for five bucks or less, do it. <laughs> do it now. And uh, pick up 118 too. That's the first appearance of the Scarlet Spider. I like Ben Riley. I, I didn't like the Clone Saga, but I thought Ben Riley was a cool character. You know. Um, this isn't really important, but uh, uh, DC had. Uh, this is the first time I saw the DC Black Label. This is a reprint of uh, Batman White Knight number one. It was free. Batman Day. Pretty cool. And I can't believe my shop still had this. They actually had a couple copies, and uh, I put one in my pull box, and then I bought one. This is Edge of Spider Geddon, number two, the variant edition. And uh, this is Penny Parker in an alternate universe in her SPDR spider mech suit. But it's also a key book, because it's the first appearance of Addie Brock. And she has a Venom mech suit. And it fights the SPDR, so that's really sweet. I did not expect that at all. Um, I read the first issue of this and I didn't like it, and then I read this issue and I thought it was awesome. So I don't know what to expect from the series anymore. I guess just pick it up because you'll find a random first appearance in there, and then it'll be worth money. Because uh, this book was four dollars last week, now it's selling for fifteen bucks. You know, if you can find that for cover, get it. Alright, the rest of this book is pretty much Ghost Rider and Donny Cates and being awesome. This isn't Donny Cates. This is uh, Jason Aaron, the, his, his Avengers. This is the number seven, the origin of the prehistoric Ghost Rider. So this is like a million BC or 10 billion BC, whatever the hell. So basically, Wendigo like, tries to eat this dude and then... Uh, Mephisto shows up as a snake and tells this dude uh, say my name and he says he says his name so then he makes him his uh, his herald his uh, his ghost rider so basically gets on this woolly mammoth and he becomes the prehistoric ghost rider and then at the end he fights Wendigo and then Odin and uh, the Phoenix show up and recruit him I thought it was a pretty cool story um, I stopped picking up uh, Avengers at like issue three just because I didn't like that story but I heard this was going to be a key book so I went and I got it and I'm I'm just glad I enjoyed it Ghost Rider's cool uh, I'm ashamed I'm getting into Ghost Rider late but I'm thankful to Donny Cates for getting me into Ghost Rider in the first place okay speaking of Ghost Rider we have uh, the Cosmic Ghost Rider issue number three this book this book was damn awesome. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I know this is a mini series. It's only five issues, and that's very sad because I think this could be an ongoing thing. I'm sure they will at some point because 
this sells it's a good story and it's a hot writer so and this is the weirdest thing this isn't why this book is awesome but um it is a first appearance of a character and when that happens usually a book spikes i know the variant cover of this book is really hot on ebay right now i don't really care too much about variants unless like i didn't like the cover that much but if i like the cover i'll get it i'm not that big on it unless it's like j scott campbell well, i mean i'm not gonna get it but yeah jugger duck right here first appearance of the jugger duck but that's not why this book's awesome this book's awesome because ghost rider you know we all know he kidnapped baby thanos and he's trying to show him that murder is wrong he's trying to prevent the future where he becomes thanos but basically the timeline is already written thanos is going to be evil and the watcher and galactus are trying to stop him and they're trying to kill thanos but ghost rider he can't do anything so he basically uh spoiler i'm gonna go on spoilers he kills all these the uh he kills all these new avengers very quickly because obviously he's super powerful you know and <laughs> This, is, this was a funny part in the book. Cable uh, takes Hank Pym's technology and he shrinks Galactus. I don't know if you want to buy that, but it is an Elseworlds story. So, I, I don't know, I laughed when I read that. But the real reason this book is damn awesome is we see the future that Ghost Rider created. And it is this. One of my favorite splash pages of the year. One of the best things I've seen in comics all year at the end we see the new punisher you ready for this reveal are you ready oh my god hi dad sorry i'm late thanos is the punisher in this apocalyptic future holy crap now i don't know if that's good or bad but clearly Thanos and the Ghost Rider are on speaking terms. Clearly, you know, Thanos treats Ghost Rider as a father. And wow, I can't wait to see that relationship unfold. And, and I am kind of angry because issue five kind of ruined this ending. Because on the cover you do see Punisher Thanos, but I didn't know that would be what happened. I just thought that it was another version of Thanos. I, I didn't know baby Thanos was going to turn into the Punisher. So that is pretty crazy how Frank Castle turned into Ghost Rider and Thanos turned into Punisher. It's really cool. And the last book, biggest book of the week, is Thanos Legacy number one. And I have very mixed opinions on this because, and it's only fitting that we start the video with Thanos and we end the video with Thanos, and both written by Donny Cates. I, this is a, this, okay, this book, is written very well but it didn't need to exist i just think it's a publicity stunt to be pretty honest with you nothing happens in this book i mean if anything it makes the story thanos wins a lot uh there's not a lot of weight to that story now because at the end of that story when thanos goes back in time and he and you think he erased his older self death says thanos won but Thanos didn't win, because when he goes back in time, he immediately, well, and this is why I didn't like Infinity Wars Prime, he immediately goes back in time to Shatari Prime, and he gets killed by fucking Gamora. And that's why he er got erased from existence at the end of Thanos Wins, not because Thanos won, but because Gamora won. And I just think that's fucking stupid. Sorry for my little rant there, but I just think this issue did not need to exist. Like, man. Like, okay, I'm not going to be naive as fuck. Thanos has died like five times in comics. He'll be back. And if Donny Cates is writing Thanos, then I'm sure it'll be good. I mean, the artwork in this book is very good. You know, and it's just like... Uh, why... Like, come on. I, okay, the things that I did like in this book, and it's pretty hilarious. Um, see someone's pissing on Thanos' corpse? <laughs> and it's the fucking Cosmic Ghost Rider. It's about damn time. Uh, 
I don't care. This video is not going to get monetized anywhere. Anyway, I can swear all I want. Um, yeah, cool. So, we see that Thanos' brother shows up, and he comes, and he steals Thanos' will. And it says to be continued. I thought that was going to be a one-shot, but I guess not. And then you get this bogus backup story, which is a silent story. It's pretty good. I mean, it's got no dialogue. But the, the best thing... When the best thing about this issue is a preview, it's not a very good comic book. This is why this book's amazing, because at the end of the book, we see that Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw are going to do Guardians of the Galaxy uh, next year. That looks incredible. Holy crap. Galactus, Star-Lord... Drax, Adam Warlock, Howard the Duck. Look at all these guys, man. Groot, Rocket. <laughs> what is that? Is that a uh, is that Gladiator? Oh my God! I can't even name all these guys. Oh, there's Silver Surfer back there too. Silver Surfer? Yeah, very cool. So many people. So yeah, who are the Guardians? Who's gonna end up on the team? I'm uh, I'm interested. It wasn't terrible. I don't regret spending my money on it. You know. There's a lot of cool shit in the book, but at the end of the day, there's just less there's less weight to this story now. Thanos wins right there, but it was a great two weeks for comics, man. I got a lot of great books. I'm very uh, thankful, grateful for everything that I've gotten, and um, I'm grateful to reaching 300 subscribers. I know it's not a lot to some people, but it's a lot to me, and... I'll keep making the videos for you guys, continue pumping them out, grinding, talking comics. Love talking comics with you guys. Um, if there's any like segments or anything like that that you want me to do, or like books to review, or if there's any books I didn't pick up that you're like, why didn't you get that? Like, tell me. Like, if, if, if you have any like reading recommendations, I'll read it. Oh, and uh, not reading Death of the Inhumans because I don't like the Inhumans. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> like don't dislike my video because of that okay anyway i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the content if you did please like and subscribe and share if you can and have the time and i will see you next time thanks for watching peace out guys <laughs>